Hey there, this is Brent Salisbury with the University of Kentucky. Uh, I'll do a couple minute here demo on Open V Switch, KVM, and those components hooking into an Open Flow controller. So, as you see on the diagram here, we've got an Open V Switch software switch running on this physical machine within a hypervisor. So, uh, Open vSwitch is just essentially, you know, a VMware vSwitch or a Nexus 1000B uh, distributed software switch that uh, gives provides connectivity to your VMs. Uh, the value prop behind it is it's got an API there that has got tons of potential and it's totally flexible. <clears throat> so for initiatives like OpenStack and uh, you know, the quantum plugin of that. Can become it's going to become really powerful uh, as uh, you know cloud computing and being able to dynamically nail up and tear down uh, uh, compute nodes becomes uh, it's, it's just it's totally programmatical uh, to be able to do that and you can customize it however you fit your organization or your architectural needs so uh, with that said. Uh, we've got this VM running on uh, KVM. So, kernel, uh, kernel based VM. So, it's integrated into the kernel now. And I think as of 2.62 or something, uh, that's all there. So, it's got the same potential, you know, the same capability as uh, the rest. So, R span, S flow, NetFlow. Uh, it's got a CLI, so it can can do everything the other ones do. It's a lot less clunky than uh, Linux bridging has traditionally been, so uh, it's going to uh, definitely, uh, it's more robust than some of that. Uh, so this node has spun up. Uh, I'll take a quick peek at what it looks like on the uh, CLI. So got a nice help there. Uh, we have a bridge zero that's essentially a VLAN, and we have taps going into that. I uh, also have an open close controller uh, node programmed in there. Notice it's not up. I don't have the controller running, but I'll fire that up here in a few minutes. Uh, so we're also exporting uh, SFlow out. So here's the command that actually is going to run. Uh, spin up a node. There we go. So the main piece of how KVM hooks in is right here. So this is where the tap gets created. Uh, so that's just a simple shell script in OBS. Uh, if up. Uh, so it's going to increment up for available taps uh, and tie those into with this command it's going to add that port into that bridge group and into that switch so I'll uh, we'll spin this guy up this is an image of something, it looks like it's XP so that's going to boot up an XP node uh, while that's booting up, let's take a quick peek at uh, this is just a simple S-Flow uh, collector and so we've got some ports, we've got some switches. Uh, 1.76 is one switch, and then we've got uh, 5 is another. And XP is sucking down my memory. Uh, if it comes back there. Or not. So that is what it looks like when it spins up. Same features as <clears throat> any other virtual machine. Uh, <clears throat> definitely some, uh, excuse me, some potential for VDI and that sort of stuff. The Spice integration, offload GPU to the local machine. Uh, that's all there. Uh, so let's go ahead. Uh, let's take a look. Let's run old 
Shell script using MZ and create some flows. Oh, give it a target. I'm gonna spam a, send, a bunch of sends at uh, another host there. What's that, 786. So now notice our sampling starts to go higher. Uh, so that's just all being exported off the vSwitch. So what this offers is uh, basically zero cost other than obviously putting it together. Uh, Nexus 1000B essentially it gives you the ability to export uh, SFlow, NetFlow off of uh, off your software switch in your data center uh, and capture that east-west traffic that uh, isn't necessarily an easy thing to do. So not a cheap thing to do, I should say. So we've got interfaces. Uh, so same kind of same kind of uh, you know you see this on about all the products out there. Uh, so there's one of our switches, and there's another switch. So pretty pictures, but you get the gist. So it's, it gives us all the visibility that we need into uh, the network. Same kind of deal. We can run reports, take a look at training. So top connections, <clears throat> drill down into them, see who's talking to who, and. Uh, the important piece is that this allows you the ability to know what's going on in your data center uh, and then provision and scale up and out. So, with that said, let's jump to another window here and take a look at OpenFlow. I'm going to turn down this guy real quick. Okay, so I'm just opening up Eclipse here. So, uh, OpenFlow is a communication protocol. Uh, nothing more than that, uh, but the important thing is it's uh, hopefully it's something we can standardize on or at least coalesce around. Oh. Got a problem with the workspace. Yes, yes. Let's use a different one. Hang on a second. Uh, So while that's loading, we'll take a quick look at uh, some examples of flows. Uh, so we've got ten, 10 potentials there. Uh, so a typical switch, you know, we're making a decision on a MAC address and a port uh, on a firewall. We're, you know, making decisions on ports and TCP ports or UDP ports and, uh, you know, what we're going to do with it. Uh, Flow switching allows you to make decisions on any of it, wildcard it, don't do anything with it, or match on everything across the board. So, obviously, tons of potential there. Uh, obviously, tons of uh, problems to work through because uh, it's a lot of stuff happening at once. So, uh, typically, uh, what we're going to see is uh, you know proactive or reactive flow insertion, I should say. So, uh, first port. Of the first packet of each flow gets put into your controller. Uh, controller makes that decision of what he wants to do with it based on all ten of these different uh, tuples here, and then uh, is gonna insert that flow into the OpenFlow enabled device that is waiting for an update. Uh, that is a totally butchered explanation of OpenFlow, but it is 4 a.m. in the morning and. I gotta get this done, so let's see. Let's jump over to Eclipse. So, for all you network engineers, you're quickly gonna be turning into software developers, unfortunately. <clears throat> so, let's kick this off. We're just gonna fire up Beacon. So, Beacon is a very slick open source controller. Uh, comes out of Stanford, so we're going to load up these modules here, and let's go ahead and run that. So we're going to get a debugs, we're get all kinds of stuff here. Basically the net of all this is we've got two switches that are joining right in here. So that source address is a switch attaching in on this port that we're listening on. Uh, so now that is being routed uh, 
and for its forwarding tables are being learned from the controller, or the controller is inserting their forwarding tables in it, layer two and layer three. So, uh, other than that, it's lots and lots of updates on where everything's going, who's seeing what. Uh, so, let's jump up to here. Here is the uh, beacon web UI. Uh, pretty interesting, uh, fairly straightforward. So we've got ports. Uh, here, are what those ports are doing, uh, and then air. So it's the same information we can get out of switches in a centralized point, uh, or through you know obviously through network management you can get all this. But this is significantly more real time. Uh, obviously, though, it's not as easy as that. Uh, so. That is the Beacon Web UI. So recently, Big Switch, who is a startup, uh, has open sourced their uh, code. Uh, so I'm just going to spin up Floodlight as the, the name of it. So that could be run in Eclipse or in a window here. So what we're seeing is. Uh, the local host, so this is the REST API. So this is kind of slick, so it's just, uh, you know, it's using JSON, so... Uh, what is JSON? JavaScript object notation. So it's going to be a really easy way to inject changes into your OpenFlow controller to control where your traffic is going to go. Uh, so this is still all pretty deep in development from what it looks like so now that's really nailed down but I really like the idea of something very readable uh, so as ports start to uh, let's see if we can find add a new flow here so we should see a flow pop up here at some point and there it is let's see if we can find it in all this gobbledygook uh, I don't see it, but somewhere uh, in a log, buried somewhere, that would be showing up. So, net of it is, there is uh, a lot to go in all this, but, uh, you know, if you peeled back the the wrapper on those switches or routers, you're going to see all this same stuff. So, uh, a lot of potential here. Uh, the overarching is, this is how we integrate traditional infrastructures into a more holistic framework uh, that is very dynamic and very flexible and can fill the business needs of what we're trying to do. So, that said, uh, I'm out there uh, on the web at uh, WordPress, uh, networkstatic.wordpress and uh, also on Twitter at CCIE11972. Uh, apologies if this was totally incoherent, but it is late and I don't sleep much, so I'm going to go try and get some. But uh, neat stuff here, so actually there was. Let me show one thing. Let's take a look at a quick curl. So this is pretty cool. So there's our return for our DP ID. So that is the uh, data path ID, and that is how many switches is being controlled by this guy. So uh, very cool and very straightforward. So I'll be real interested to see where they go with that uh, with that API for control. Uh, definitely follow also uh, where OpenStack is going with uh, integration of both these. Uh, 